Okay, hi everyone. Um, my name is John Burkhart. I work for Microsoft at Microsoft Startup Labs. And uh, tonight I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Live Mesh. It's a um, consumer product and also a developer platform that's coming out later this year. Um, first, a quick plug for our group. So we were founded in November 2007. We're based here in Kendall Square, Cambridge. We're focused on uh, new product incubation, new business ideas. And um, our director, Reed Sturdivant, is here tonight. Right over here. And um, we're hiring. So if you're interested in checking us out, you can look at Microsoft.com careers and um, see, see what job listings are available. Okay, so what is Live Mesh? Um, the inspiration for Live Mesh came from a problem that a lot of us have now. Um, we do everything on the World Wide Web today. We live on the web. It's how we communicate. It's how we interact with information. It's how we find out about what's going on. Um, and a lot of times we do that from multiple devices. So I might have a PC at home, a PC at work, and a mobile device. And um, right now when I add another device to that environment, it's actually a lot harder for me to get productive right away. I have to spend a lot of time at, uh, synchronizing everything, adding all my applications, um, all my settings. And once I've done that, it's hard for me to keep up to date. I might have like some things on one computer and some things on another computer, and it's really hard to keep track of it. This is kind of the problem that inspired this product. Um, from the consumer's point of view, it's about tying all that together into a, a cohesive environment. So you want to have a, um, a single view of all the devices in your world um, all in one place. You also want to have access to all of your information. So I'd be able to access data on one PC from any of my other PCs or also from the web. So if I'm not even in front of my, one of my computers, I still want to get access to all my stuff. Um, it's also a sharing component so I can um, give permission to people I trust to have access to certain uh, files or folders in my mesh. And then it also provides a way to stay up to date with what's going on in that environment. So I can get a sort of an aggregated news feed of all the events that are taking place. So for the developer, so that's you know, sort of the consumer story. For the developer, this is also a platform. So Live Mesh is exposed as a set of web services. Uh, they're based on RESTful protocol, Atom publishing protocol. Um, you can ask for data in XML or in JSON, so it's pretty easy to write uh, web applications. Synchronization model is based on um, sort of an adjunct spec called FeedSync, um, which uh, you can learn more about it at uh, feedsync.org. There's another um, implementation, another specification that was developed by Ray Ozzy for doing um, synchronization, disconnected, asynchronous synchroni synchronization. Um, you're able to build on this platform um, because it's you know, sort of this based on these open protocols, you're able to build in a lot of different environments. It's not really tied to one development environment or one language. Um, we've experimented with um, you know, JavaScript, um, obviously .NET, uh, Ruby, Python, um, Perl. Uh, this is just a quick overview of the data model. I don't want to go through the whole thing, but the idea here is that everything in the mesh is sort of represented as feeds. So everything here is an atom feed. You see like, sort of a hierarchy of feeds within feeds within feeds, and everything's sort of hyperlinked together. So you can navigate through this in a, you know, a way that you would expect in sort of a RESTful service, um, you know, navigating through hyperlinks through this hierarchy of data. Uh, this is just an example of feed sync. So this is you know, what you'd see in a typical atom feed. And um, I just wanted to show kind of what FeedSync adds to that. Adds a little bit of metadata to um, describe how the feed is being shared. And then um, within each item, it shows sort of a history of who last touched that item and who um, and when that occurred. And then FeedSync also specifies an algorithm for how to read that information and perform a merge. Um, it actually doesn't handle conflicts automatically, right? So you could still have a conflict if there are two endpoints edit something in a disconnected state. Um, but it does flag that, saves both versions, and then um, pushes that up to the application developer to kind of flag that to the user. So it doesn't try to do that automatically. It will deterministically pick a winner. Um, and then uh, it's up to the application writer and the end user to say which version they actually want. Uh, types of applications that you can build um, we're, you know, in our group, we're experimenting with a lot of these different models. Um, so you can build 
know, the kind of things we want to build are sort of client applications that still have a present, that are still are web aware. They're still connected to the web and to all the information that the user wants, um, live information. You can also um, write web applications that can then have a presence on the desktop. There is a desktop component. And you can write um, small web applications that run in that environment and can run in either, either environment. Um, it's also designed to be really flexible. So you can build um, you know, the same code that can run in both of those environments. I can build an app that runs uh, you know, both in the web environment and on the desktop with the exact same code without having to re rewrite any of the code. And I don't have time to explain this one. This is um, the encryption. So everything's encrypted end to end. I don't even really understand all of it, so that's good. Um, so for more information, you can uh, check it out on mesh.com. It's um, going to be coming out later this year as a consumer product and then a developer platform soon to follow after that. Thank you.